Right, okay guys, so you have done a full inspection um, of your chimney, whether it be the fire like we're doing at the moment or whether it be the boiler. You've done a full inspection, you're happy with that to continue. So what we're going to do now is a flue flow test. Okay. Now as we've discussed already, the purpose of the flue flow test is to make sure that we've got a pull on the flue, a draft, all the products of combustion will go up and also to make sure that we haven't got any leaks in the flue. So that's the purpose of this test. So as we've already discussed, we're going to be using smoke pellets for the flue flow test. Now we can't just go down the joke shop and get some smoke bombs, essentially that is what they are, but they must meet some certain standards as we've already discussed. They must be capable of, of uh, producing five meters cubed of smoke and burning for 30 seconds. And you'll find the information uh, from the manufacturers as, as to what they can do. Okay? They come in different shapes and sizes, like so and like so. Now these ones are a slight exception to the rule. If we look on the manufacturers, it tells us that it only produces 2.5 meters cubed of smoke. But it does tell us that it meets the British standard 5440 part one. So it's acceptable for us to use. They do have a longer burn time of 45 seconds. We do get some big beasties that produce 24 meters cubed of smoke. And I'll, I'll do a demo on these now. These really do produce a lot of smoke, okay? So be a little bit careful with them as we're gonna discuss in a minute. We're also gonna use our smoke match. But remember, we don't actually use the smoke match for the flu flow. We use it as an aid, as we're gonna discuss now, okay? So we're in the room where the appliance is, the boiler, the fire, whatever it's gonna be. What's the first thing that we're going to do? We've done the visual inspection, we're ready to do this test now. What's the first thing we're going to do? Close the windows, doors. We're going to close all the doors and the windows. We need to create the worst case scenario in terms of airflow, don't we? Okay. So we're, we've let the customer know we're closing all the doors and windows for this test. Can we please keep them shut until we've finished? Now, if you're doing um, an inset live fuel effect fire, or you're doing a decorative fuel effect fire, then we won't have a closure plate, will we? So the first demo we're going to do, we're just going to put a smoke match inside with no closure plate. But if you're um, flu flowing for a radiant fire, of course you will have the closure plate, and we will need to fit that closure plate in position for the flu flow test because that's going to restrict airflow, isn't it? So we'll do one without and one with, okay? So to make our life nice and easy, um, we've got a smoke pellet holder, and it also is a smoke match holder as well, which I'll demonstrate to you now. So, before we go lighting 24 meters cubed of smoke in the front room, we want to make sure there's a good chance it's going to go up the flue, otherwise we're going to fill that place full of stinky smoke. So to find out if we've got an initial pull on the flue, let's use the smoke match. So we can pop that into the smoke match holder like so, nice and handy, we don't burn our fingies. They don't light very well on the lid, so it's best to light them with a blowtorch. I hold that inside. And I'll light that up, and we will just see if we've got an initial pull. Yeah. That looks pretty good to me. We haven't got any smoke spilling out of the front, so we have an initial pull. Now if you didn't have an initial pull, or you didn't think it was very good, then we can warm the flue, can't we? Now in this scenario here, we've taken the fire out to do this test. So we're going to have to use the blowtorch to warm it up if we need it. So you can do that for a good few minutes, just to get a bit of heat flowing up that through because flue, because that is the motive power, isn't it? That heat, the hot gas is rising up to create that draft. If you were doing a boiler, 
then the boiler will be in position, won't it? So you can just turn the boiler on for a few minutes and warm the flue that way. Once you're happy there's an initial pull, then of course we can go ahead and we can do the flue flow test proper with the smoke pellet. So in a scenario like this where we're just testing an open face maybe for an inset live fuel effect or DFE, we're just going to get that nice and deep inside. We don't want any smoke spilling out the front because we didn't put it in far enough. Okay? So we get that inside and then we will light. You can see the amount of smoke that that one is producing. Okay? First thing we're looking for is a pull. If we've got smoke coming out the front, we've got an issue, haven't we? Once we're happy that there, there is a pull, we can now start to look at the flue, the chimney, the brickwork, whatever is around us within that room. We're looking for smoke spilling out. Okay? By the time we've done that, we're satisfied, probably the pellet would have burnt out. What we can then do is leg it outside, can't we? Get on the pavement across the road, looking up at the flue terminal to make sure it's coming out the right flue terminal and it's not leaking out of any um, joints on the chimney stack. Okay? So we've got the pole and we can't see any leaks. Then we're going to light another one. We've got to go through the whole route of that flue, haven't we? The whole route of the chimney. Second floor, first floor, second floor, roof space the full route to make sure there is no leaks. So it might take a few pellets. This one's still going, and it? it's a good one. Okay. Be very careful with the spent um, pellet. It will be hot for a while. Don't go putting it straight in the bin, and don't go putting it on the shag pile carpet or the liner. Okay. So that was a pass. Let's try it with the closure plate. You will replace the closure plate, nice brand new closure plate, get it into position. Now make sure that you seal it on all four sides, including the bottom, often gets forgotten. But of course, we will not block up that air relief hole. We're going to use that air relief hole to do our spilly uh, flue flow test with this closure plate in position. Exactly the same process. I'll just get that ready in position. Light it up. I'll push that in nice and deep. And we're looking now for any smoke coming out of the letterbox opening. And again, that's good, isn't it? You can see the smoke there, but it's not leaking out. So once you're happy with the initial pull, same procedure, looking for any leaks around, get outside, check that terminal, get right through that building, use as many smoke pellets as you need to satisfy that the, the test is a pass. That would be what we would do for a fireplace. But of course, we're going to be doing exactly the same thing for open flued boilers. Okay? So hopefully that has finished burning. Yeah, that's finished burning. So we can do exactly the same procedure for our open flue boilers. If you've got a draft diverter on your boiler, then of course we can put this smoke pellet underneath the draft diverter. You'll see a lot of these guys, as you know this is the back boiler and we haven't got a draft diverter as such with the back boiler. No problem, we're going to put that on top of the heat exchanger just underneath the flue. Exactly the same thing, I'll light it up. There we go, that smoke pellet's now burning away. We're looking for any smoke spilling out the front but as we can see, this one's pulling up nicely. Okay? You'd do the same thing initially with the smoke pellet, see if you've got a bit of draft. If you didn't have an initial draft, you could light that back border up and get that flue warmed. Okay? Exactly the same thing after that. It might take you a number of pellets to get through that property, to get through the full length of the flue, 
to make sure we've got no leaks after we've got the initial draft. Okay, 